In the last lecture, we learned how to create a custom attribute directive. So if I go to VS Code, here we have created a directive called set background. And for that set background directive, we have specified the selector as set background. And it is an attribute directive because we are wrapping it within square brackets here. And in there, what we are doing is on whichever element we are going to use this selector on that element, we are setting its background color and we are setting it to gray. And we are also setting the text color to white. Now, in order to achieve this, what we are doing is we are going to get a reference of the HTML element on which we have used this selector through this element ref property. So this element here, it is going to receive a reference of the HTML element on which we have used this selector, right? That's what we have learned in the last lecture. And on that reference, using this native element property, we are setting its style. Basically, we are setting the background color for that element and we are also setting the text color for that element. Now here, the native element property, it contains a reference to the underlying DOM object. Okay, so when we use this native element property, it gives us a direct access to the DOM. Now, there is nothing wrong with this approach, but it is not advisable to access the DOM objects directly and manipulate it. And there are several reasons for that. First of all, Angular keeps the component and the view in sync using templates, data binding and change detection, etc. So all of them are bypassed when we update the DOM directly. Also, DOM manipulation works only in browsers. So you will not be able to use the app in other platforms like in a web worker or in a server for server side rendering or in a desktop or mobile app where there is no browser. And also the DOM APIs do not sanitize the data. And that's why it is possible to inject a script thereby opening our app an easy target for XSS injection attacks. And because of these reasons, Accessing and manipulating the DOM element directly by using native element property of element ref is not recommended. So in this lecture, we are going to learn about a better way of manipulating the DOM without accessing the DOM directly. And that is by using renderer2 class. Renderer2 is a class which allows us to manipulate the DOM without accessing the DOM elements directly by providing a layer of abstraction between the DOM element and the component code. Let's understand how to use renderer2 class with a simple example. So here, as I mentioned earlier, using this native element property, we are trying to access the DOM directly and we are directly manipulating the DOM, which is not a good practice. So now, instead of using this native element property, what we are going to do is we are going to use renderer2 class. Now, in order to use renderer2 class, what we want is we want Angular to inject an instance of that renderer2 class inside this set background class for that inside this constructor i'm going to specify another parameter i'll simply call it renderer and the type of this parameter is going to be renderer2 now in order to use this renderer2 class we also need to import it from angular slash co so if i press enter it has been automatically added here all right so what angular will do is angular will inject an instance of this renderer2 class and it will assign that instance to this renderer parameter. Now this renderer parameter currently it will be only available inside this constructor because it is a parameter. So it will be local to this constructor. So what we want is we want to have a private property for that. We can go ahead and we can create a private property. This property also I will call it as renderer. Okay. And it is going to store an instance of renderer2. So I can say the type is renderer2. All right. And then what I want is to this renderer property, I want to assign the value which we have received for this renderer parameter. So here I can say this dot renderer equals the value which we have received for this renderer parameter. So I can do it something like this. Or in short, what we can do is I can comment these two lines and what I can do is I can simply put a private keyword in front of this parameter. So what it will do is behind the scenes, it will create a property called renderer like we were doing here. And then it will also assign that private property with the value which we have received for this renderer parameter like we were 
doing here. Okay. Now, using the instance of this renderer2 class, what we can do is, we can create an element, we can add text node to it, we can append child elements using append child method, etc. We can also add or remove styles, HTML attributes, CSS classes and properties, etc. using this renderer2. So, in this lecture, what we will do is, we will simply set some styles using the instance of this renderer class. Okay, so what I'll do is, I'll first comment these two lines. And now, we are going to use the instance of this renderer2 class, basically this renderer property. So, first, let's access that property using this keyword. So, we can say this dot renderer. Now, what we want is, we want to set some CSS styles. For that, we have a method on this renderer class called set style. Now, this set styles method takes three required parameters. The first parameter will be the element on which we want to set the style. So, we basically want to set the CSS style on the element on which we have used this set background selector, the selector of this directive. And we are going to get that element inside this element parameter, inside this element property. Right. So, we can access that element using this dot element. And from that element, we want to get the native element. Okay. So, this is the first argument. First, we are going to specify the element on which we want to set the style. Then, the second argument is the style which we want to set. Here, we want to set background color. So, we can specify it as string. And the third argument will be the value for that style. So, here, we want to set the background color to this value. So, I'll pass this value as the third argument. Now, if I hover over this set style method, you will see that we also have an optional flags parameter. Okay, but this parameter is optional, so we will not worry about that right now. All right, so here, using this line, what we are doing is we are setting the background color on the element on which we have used this selector. Now, keep in mind, since we are using this renderer, we are now not directly manipulating the DOM. Instead, this renderer class, it will create an abstraction between the DOM and the code which we are writing. Here, we are not manipulating the DOM directly by setting the style on this native element property. Okay. Then we also want to set the text color. So again, I'll copy this line of code. And since we want to set a CSS style, again, we are going to use this set style method. We still want to set the text color on the same element. Now this time, the second parameter will be different. So this time we want to set the text color. So the CSS property is color. And we want to set this color to white. Okay, if I save the changes, if we go to the web page, and if I open any one of these products, you will still notice that that directive is still working. The background color is still set to gray and the text color is white. If I go back, and if I change the text color to maybe yellow. And now if we go back to the web page. And if I open any one of these products. Now you will see that the text color is yellow. Alright. So we are still doing the same thing using this renderer class also. But this time we are not directly accessing the DOM. Now this renderer class. It also has other methods. For example here if I simply type this dot renderer dot you will see all the properties and methods which you can use. For example, if you want to append a child inside that element, you can use this append child method. Then we have create comment, create element. So in this way, we have many other properties and methods. And we are going to see some of them in our coming lectures. For example, if you want to set attribute here, let me go ahead and let me set an attribute. Okay. And I want to set the attribute on the same HTML element on which we have used this selector. So we are going to get its reference inside this element parameter. So let me copy that element. Okay. So this is going to be the first argument for the set attribute. Then we need to specify what attribute do we want to set. Let's say I want to set the title attribute. Okay. And this attribute is basically HTML attribute. So for example, we have an input element. On that input element, we can have attributes like type, so we specify type equal to text, type equal to number like that. So this type is an attribute. 
in the same way we can also have a value attribute on the input element so using this set attribute what we can do is we can set some attribute dynamically on an html element all right so here i'm trying to set the title attribute on the html element on which we are using this set background selector basically currently we are using this set background selector on these three span elements so we want to set some title for these span elements and that's what i'm trying to do using this set attribute method so the second argument is basically the attribute which we want to set and the third argument here is the value which we want to set for that attribute so here let's say let's simply specify some text maybe this is example title this is just to demonstrate this so let's save the changes let's go to the web page let me open any product and now when i hover over these span elements you can see this title this is example title right if i hover over on this here also you can see this is example title okay so in this way using this set attribute method we can also set some attribute dynamically on the html element all right in the same way we also have another method another important method on this renderer class which is add class okay so using this add class we can add some css class on an html element in the same way we also have remove class okay and using this remove class if we want we can remove the existing css class from an html element and we will see this with an example in our coming lectures all right so i will go ahead and i will remove this line and let me also comment this line we don't want to set the title attribute here this was just for demonstration so keep in mind that renderer2 class allows us to manipulate the dom without accessing the dom elements directly by providing a layer of abstraction between the dom element and the component code all right so this is all about renderer2 we are going to use renderer2 in our coming lectures also so if you have any questions related to renderer2 or related to this lecture then feel free to ask it Thank you for listening and have a great day.